Oh my God, am I excited for this podcast. This is about singing whatever you want. Okay? How do you study multiple genres? How do you analyze what you listen to? How can you apply that to your voice? Do you want to analyze something from each genre on this podcast? Let me know. We're going to go over all of these things. So, how do you study multiple genres? The truth is, it does take a lot of work, but listening is the main thing. When we listen to the greats of each genre, we can hear and pick up the idiomatic traits of the genre through that singer. You can learn so much from listening. Start there. So do research. Who are the greats in the genre? And then listen, listen, listen. So a little bit about me is that I am obsessed with jazz. I have been since I was a wee, wee, wee child. My dad is a jazz trombonist, and I'm just obsessed with my dad, and always will be. He's a rock star. And I was exposed to jazz trombone at a very young age and um, big band at a very young age. So I was always really interested in it. So in middle school and high school, when everyone was listening to the radio, I was listening to Ella Fitzgerald on repeat, and I mean on repeat. I'm not kidding. Like maybe I would veer to like Sarah Vaughn, and um, Frank Sinatra and Chet Baker every once in a while, but I was, like, always listening to Ella Fitzgerald. And it got to a point where people would start to tell me, like, wow, you sing jazz really well. Like, you you sound like a jazz singer. And I was like, what? (laughs) Why? And I realized it was because Ella Fitzgerald taught me how to sing. Like, I already knew how to sing, Well, you know, I was 11, but you know, (laughs) I already had my voice and I already knew I liked to sing, but because of how much I listened to Ella Fitzgerald, all of those little tiny things that are hard to teach, those things that you just kind of get sucked into your brain, you, you don't know why you know it. All those things came shining through so clearly from how much I listened to her. So that's my biggest advice. If you really want to learn a certain genre, find out who the greats are. Find out who everyone looks up to. Find out who the absolute professional masters are. And listen to them. Listen to what they do. Analyze what they do. So how do you analyze what they do? What are their vowel shapes like? What is their vibrato like? Is their vibrato? Where is the vibrato? What's their tone color like? What's the groove? Are the eighth notes swung? Are they straight? What's the orchestration like? All of these things influence how you sing it, whether you realize it or not. And these are things that we may not inherently think about, but when you ask yourself these questions and listen, you may hear it more than you think. I'll use jazz as an example. A lot of the vowel shapes are more colloquial. They sound like the way we speak. This can be contrary to other genres like musical theater and opera where we want more of that clear diction, um, that proper diction, the IPA-based diction. So the vowels are very mixed. They're very, very based in our speech. That can be a huge thing. If you are approaching jazz with really tall, pure vowels, it's inherently not going to sound like the genre, even if you're doing everything else right. And it may be a thing where you don't understand why it doesn't sound that way, but it could just be a vowel thing. Again, what's the vibrato like? In jazz, a lot of times, things are straight tone, and then vibrato is added in as a dramatic color or... Um, just another tone color option. So sometimes it's in the middle of the phrase, but oftentimes it lands at the end of a phrase or the end of a phrase or the end of a whole section. Like we leave the vibrato to the very last second. Um, Again, other than for dramatic reasons. Sometimes we do a whole phrase with vibrato or the beginning of the phrase with vibrato for really trying to get a certain message across. So this could be a thing. If you are approaching it all straight tone or all vibrato, 
the whole time, it's not going to sound like jazz. This doesn't mean that you're singing incorrectly or sing, you're singing with bad technique. It's purely based on what's appropriate for the genre. So what's the tone color like? This can be dependent on the artist. It's not always that the genre has a whole tone color to itself. But you'll notice in jazz, there can be some darker ideals with it. A lot of times, with especially Ella Fitzgerald, when she gets into a certain part of her range, it sounds quite dark. But there's flexibility in it. So when we go high, we get into that light, high, mixy place. So if you approach it with that musical theater twang, it may not sound exactly like jazz. These are all things that you can figure out on your own from listening. Obviously, going to a teacher like me, (laughs) not plugging, but anyway, going to a teacher can really help you jumpstart this and make this a little more immediate for you. But if you can't afford a teacher, you don't have time for a teacher, or you're just ready to do it on your own, go listen. Make a playlist. Listen in the car. And then maybe when you have a minute, listen and write things down that you notice. And then the next step is applying that to your voice. So this is the part where a teacher can be really helpful. You can even take your analysis to your teacher and try things out with them. If you have a teacher like me <laughs> who is very open to these sorts of things and open to cross-genre training and open to the fact that your voice can make all sorts of sounds in a healthy way, these the analysis that you bring to them will be extremely helpful for them to get you where you need to go. You can also experiment with these sounds on your own. Try to mimic them. So I know a lot of times people are really hesitant to mimic singers because they want to have their own voice and they don't want um, to be mimicking a singer in their own performance. Totally get that and that's very valid. But when you're learning a genre and the idioms of a genre, mimicking the singers and the greats that do it the best will help you to implement that in your own voice. Ooh, doggy shake. (laughs) So anyway, I'm not asking you to be that singer and sing as if you're that singer, but you can mimic those tones and those sounds and decide how does that fit into my instrument. And you can sing along. Let it sink into your musicality. This should be so, so specific. This is not merely just the tone color, or just the vowels. It's all of the things together. So if you want to know more about all these other genres and how to do this, we can go into depth with all of the genres that I feel comfortable doing that with. (laughs) Because I'll be honest, I love all the genres, but there are some genres I know more than others, and that's how it goes for everybody. So if you want, we can talk about jazz, opera, Legit musical theater, contemporary musical theater, pop, or rock. Those are my genres. Those are, those are my loves. And we can absolutely go in depth and analyze them. If that's something that interests you, leave a comment, let me know, send me a message, go on my website, do the thing. But we could, I could talk forever about this. But I hope that that helped you, and go ahead and try it. Let me know how it goes. Love you. Happy learning. Bye.